Hello, hello, dear Cancer. Welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. Thank you so much for being here. This is your mid month of January 2020 general and love reading. I just got a glimpse of the Eight of Cups. Uh, still shuffling for you. Hope that you all are well after this eclipse, the full moon uh, lunar eclipse that happened in your sign. It is a very important time for you, especially having that eclipse. A full moon is always endings. It was an eclipse. So obviously the energies of that full moon will be lasting way longer that, than what a normal full moon would be. For those of you that are interested in the astrology of the times of January, I do have some videos that I've uploaded. I do have in individual videos for each sign for that lunar eclipse. If you haven't seen it, you can see the link at the end of the reading. And for more astrology, I do have the first video uploaded for January, which is called Astro Check-In. So let's see what's happening for you, dear Cancer. Mid-January, mid and I'm doing a four-card spread, mid-January 2020. Four-card spread, but I'm taking more cards. I do have a few decks here. I will be looking at your love life as well with a Mirror's Love Oracle. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we've got Scorpio, Death and Transformation. Pluto was activated, obviously, with the Lunar Eclipse. Pluto and Saturn, which came together after so many years. It's it, it is history in the making. It is very important times for everyone on a collective scale. Now, you may be dealing with a, can, um, sorry, a Scorpio person, or you may be going through some sort of huge change because this is Pluto. Scorpio is, the house of Scorpio is all about intimacy, being intimate um, sexually, as well as, you know, your partner's mon money, money from other sources, you know, banks, loans, deeds, wills, anything like that, money coming from other sources. Now, Scorpio is also the house of the occult, things that are very hidden. So um, let's see if this full moon showed you what was coming to a completion. Let's see what's in the foundation. Okay, two of wands. So it looks as though you're on a new journey. You're on a new path. Okay, you've stepped through a new doorway. You are ready to go on an adventure, ready to maybe even um, discover the world. Or, you know, you've made a choice. Maybe you've turned your back on something that you've created in the past. You could have a new creation here that you're hoping to expand to the world. Now, this is the energy of Sagittarius for me. So we've got Scorpio, Sagittarius, could be someone that's on the cusp. In the recent past, Queen of Pentacles, which would be a Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus. Okay, Queen of Pentacles could be a mother figure. She is the mother of Earth. She's very good with her money. She's very loving, nurturing, and generous as well. Very steady sort of a character. And again, she does promise anything to do with money, something that is long-lasting. She is looking at that pentacle, um, and she's good with making it grow. So the Queen of Pentacles, as I said, could be a motherly figure, could be your partner that's already mother, or could be someone that maybe even reminds you of your mother, someone that, uh, someone that would hold the fort, if you know what I mean. It's like she's got very good, um, very good tactics where family is concerned. Okay, now she's the minor arcana of the Empress. What is on your mind? Page of Swords, which can be a message, some sort of communication. Page of Swords is also the student. This could also be just communication about truth. Okay, the Page of Swords can also be the student. For those of you that are already a mother, you may have a child that is 
hoping to take their education further. Maybe even uh, the change could be on the family front if one of your children are moving away for studies, for anything, for discovery of their own life. Let's see what the outcome is. And we've got the Hierophant, which is Taurus. So Taurus is all about values, it's earned income. The Hierophant can speak of a commitment, it can speak of doing things in the religious way. This is very spiritual, this uh, card. We do have um, an energy where we're speaking of beliefs. Our beliefs may be changing, dear Cancer, your beliefs. We do have two keys here, which could be two choices. We've got a two here as well. So the Hierophant, again, can speak of also restrictions, having to do things in a traditional way. Now, the House of Taurus does speak of money. It speaks of values. Uranus is transiting. Uranus is very radical, very quick to change. It is transiting through the House of Taurus, um, the sign of Taurus, I should say, and... It has recently, actually, on the eclipse, it turned direct. So quick changes. Um, Uranus in Taurus is very revolutionary. It's very quick to bring change. It's also the money house. So there could be changes where money is concerned as well. Changes in the way that someone earns their money, brings in their comforts, their self-worth as well. And again, the Hierophant can also speak of commitment. Okay, so this could even be, let's say, breaking traditions, a change in tradition as well. What's at the bottom of the deck? We've got the Four of Swords, and the Four of Swords is taking a bit of a break. This is the warrior that's in between um, battles. This is someone who's been through some action, through some difficulty. He is meditating, he is healing, resting. He could be connecting to the divine Spiritually, he could be um, taking the time out. Maybe this could be spiritual growth as well. Why do I say that? Because the three of swords that are above his head are a challenge, obviously, and therefore could be someone that is reaching out to spirit for enlightenment. Now, this could also be some sort of an illness. This could be someone who is bedridden for a while, trying to heal a literal uh, issue where health is concerned. Let's see what's beneath that. And we've got the Page of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles could be another messenger. Page of Pentacles could be another child. This could be a message which promises growth, growth on something that's physical, tangible, anything to do with finances. And we've also got Judgment card here, which is Scorpio and Pluto. And I do see this as a helping energy. This is resurrection, being given that second chance. It's time to, you know, have take another breath of life and continue. Um, so what I see here is that there is a very close call for someone. This is a remote um, message that I have to speak of because that's what I felt. There is a remote escape from death here and it could be that even um, spirit was there. Maybe this was some sort of a challenge. Um, there are always, there always is a reason behind everything. I do truly believe that. But I feel that there was necessity for change and sometimes when we can't make the change on our own, that's when the divine comes in and brings in that change. And for good, obviously, it's meant to be, it's meant to happen. So this could have brought someone closer to spirit, closer to the church, okay? And seems like it's quite a Saturnian sort of a lesson here. We did have Saturn and Pluto meeting, as I said, very close to the eclipse. Anyway, let's take the uh, Amira's Love Oracle and let's see what's happening in your love life.
Now, there is something to do with the law here, I feel. Because we know that Sagittarius and Capricorn have got to do with the law. Now, it's interesting to see that the death card Scorpio and Taurus are right across from each other in the in the zodiac wheel. So um, Scorpio's got to do with sharing on a very fundamental, as I said, level, money from other sources. And Taurus is the money that we, uh, the things that we own. So it's interesting to see that we've got those uh, both signs there and they're both fixed energies which fixed energies are quite difficult to overcome difficult to, uh, to have change but we do have the hierophant which is a five i will be taking more cards on that so please spirit for cancer and their love life mid-january we have control which is capricorn for me Controlling, very controlling, having to do things in a certain way, being boxed in a situation, maybe by any hierarchy, any um, restrictions, constrictions here with the Hierophant. Control means there is obviously someone trying to control a situation. Maybe this is even... Um, having lost control in a situation. Let's take more cards. And we've got friendship. That's interesting because another sign had these two cards. I can't remember. I don't think they were in the same sign. So I don't remember the signs. Nevertheless, control, friendship. Let's see. Now, this is a puppet on a string. Some of you may have felt as though you've been like a puppet on a string. You've been going in the way that um, spirit and life is taking you. It could be that there is a group of people, friends, that are your support system. Let's see what else. And we've got the brunette female. She's showed up at least three times in these readings. So the brunette female, if you are female, then this is your energy. This could be the Queen of Pentacles, of course. Let's see what's at the bottom. And we've got gossip. Wow. We've got gossip here, which gossip means that you're obviously finding out the truth about something. And this could be through friendships, through the grapevine. This could even be um, because there is, we've got a dark girl right here who is, very similar to this brunette female here. But I don't think, I think this is a three-way situation, three people in a situation. This has got to do with friendships. Could even be a tribe. Someone is has been trying to control a situation and that's in relation to, um, could even be anything to do with business because control is Capricorn energy. And this is, dear Cancer, this is other people. The house of Capricorn for you is your seventh house, which is romantic as well as any sort of a relationship with others. Now, this could be remote, that there is gossip, people are talking in the background. Here we could have uh, that you may have been in a controlling situation and that's why change was necessary. Friendship, as I said, could be a tribe, it could be even a family. We do have a group of people here and we've got a young, dark female here. I will take some more cards in a little while. Let's just take some Lenormand right now and see, dear Cancer, what's this all about? These could even be co-workers. For some of you, this could be happening in the work scene as well. Let's take three Lenormand for Cancer, please, Spirit. What are they dealing with? We have the dog 
it's a puppy in this case and this is the card of friendship okay we have the fox which is very similar to the seven of swords now the fox speaks of intelligence the puppy the puppy is very innocent it is a number 18 which is the number of the moon the moon obviously rules cancer and the moon is the home so maybe there was I feel as though I don't know why but I feel that it's got more to do with family here we do have a mother figure here and I feel as though there's been someone someone's been trying to control a situation something to do with because we've got a 14 here something to do with uh, 14 is the temperance card which would be Sagittarian energy and that's got to do with uh, foreign cultures different countries maybe even higher education the teacher now the Fox can be a card of intelligence but it can be also very sneaky now the four also adds up to the five we've got the 18 which equals a nine again if we add the nine and the five that's 14 again it's asking for faith that healing will come through whatever's happened because here we've got two different uh, energies are very innocent and a very sneaky energy so could this be someone in your home someone who is trying to control a situation now it could be someone that's uh, could be someone that is either Sagittarius or Capricorn could be on the cusp let's take another card and we've got number 17 which is the storks and the storks can speak of relocation of course it's a 17 which is this the star and the star card does speak of Aquarius Aquarius can speak of the future the storks can also speak of um, as I said relocation movement now the storks can also speak of pregnancy the Queen of Pentacles is the motherly figure she doesn't show up as pregnant here but could this be a new pregnancy where it's not visible whatever the case there are people talking about your situation and about what's what's going on so let's take some more cards Let's see what this death card is. And we've got the Four of Pentacles. And the Four of Pentacles is my Taurian energy, nevertheless. Uh, Four of Pentacles could mean someone is holding on and not wanting um, to change. This is a number four. Four speak of home, family, stability. Someone is fighting change here and transformation. Someone is not want, wanting to release something for the transformation to happen. And again, that could be around family, home. Let's see what that Two of Wands is. Four of Pentacles can also speak of feeling a sense of lack where money is concerned you know holding on to what you value holding on to what you feel not open to change let's see what that two of wands is we've got the five of pentacles now so again a feeling of lack uh, feeling left out in the cold not being on the same page with someone and that could be spiritually um, emotionally as well as physically two people that are feeling left out in the cold Fives again always speak of change, so let's take another card on that five, and we've got the hanging man, which is Pisces. Now the hanging man can speak of sacrifice, someone is needing to change their perspective, someone is needing to maybe end a situation. Pisces is the ending, it's the last sign of the zodiac. Now the hanging man, again, can speak of being enlightened, finding the enlightenment after not seeing it because these two people here don't know that there are blessings 
around them. They don't know how to tap into that energy. Um, maybe that's why there's been a change here and someone is looking to travel the world, maybe go on that adventure and uh, someone's obviously seen the truth here. Let's see what that uh, Queen of Pentacles is all about. And we've got the Two of Cups and the Two of Cups is a soulmate connection. It's two people that are in love, two people that agree on everything. Even if they disagree on things, they still agree that there is, you know, this is a relationship that is equal, therefore there is democracy here and there is deep understanding as well as an emotional connection very strong. Let's look at that page of swords. And we've got the Eight of Cups and I did say as I started to shuffle that I got a glimpse of that Eight of Cups. Now we've got the Eclipsed Moon here in the background. Obviously, here there's been growth, there's been movement after news has come through. It's funny to see that we've got the Two of Cups here and the Eight of Cups there where this person is moving, going, they can't see those Two of Cups because this is in the recent past position. This person is walking straight into a controlling situation. But they're obviously very, this is spiritual growth. That's what I see with this card. This person could be going on a retreat, some sort of movement, leaving those Eight of Cups behind. What this tells me is that obviously a, and we do have gossip here, we've got, for those of you that are in a relationship where there are three people concerned, I did say there's three people here, now they're all uh, feminine, doesn't have to be, could be a same-sex relationship, but doesn't have to be. So obviously the door has been opened before a door has closed here and the truth comes to light and the eclipse energies unfold here where someone is moving into, uh, and I'm, I want to say, I mean, this is the control card. Um, by moving, they're trying to control a situation. And when I say moving, this could even mean leaving, leaving someone or something behind. They're trying to control a situation here. Let's look at the Hierophant. It is a number five. And we've got the Queen of Cups here, which is a water sign. So now we've got two queens. Queen of Cups could be a Pisces, could be a Scorpio. Scorpio or Pisces. So the Queen of Cups is someone who's very, very intuitive. She's someone who can, she looks into that cups and she can see, she can see through the veil. She's got that, uh, that uh, higher knowledge, high, she, her higher self is very on point. I'm going to say that because I said, this, we're talking about either Pisces or Scorpio. If this is a Pisces, then the Queen of Pentacles, which I see as Virgo, this is the same person. Why? Because um, Virgo is right across from Pisces, right? And the Queen of Pentacles to me is usually the Virgo card. Let's take a look at this Four of Swords. And we have the King of Pentacles now. We have the King and the Queen of Pentacles. King of Pentacles would be Taurus. We've got the Hierophant here as well. Some of you may have strong Taurus in your chart. I feel as though it's your energy. You are the one that's doing the meditating. You are growing spiritually. You've been in a quite a challenge here where family is concerned, 
home. This is the Four of Swords. Remember? Some of you may have been through um, health issues as well. As I said, we've got the King and the Queen of Pentacles here. Dear Cancer, this is a couple. These are This is a soulmate connection. And they are facing each other. Now we've got the Two of Cups here. I do believe that the Queen of Cups is more than likely the same person, the Queen of Pentacles. For some of you, this could be a third person. Could it be? Could it be? And I'm going to say that it could go either way. Because in the outcome position, we've got the Hierophant. I want to take one more card on the Queen of Cups. Wow. Two cards fell out and I will take them. Oh, my God. And they fell out right on the Hanging Man. We've got the King of Swords and we've got the High Priestess. Now we've got the Hierophant and the High Priestess, which are, this is a spiritual bond, this is a spiritual connection. But we've got the King of Swords here. These two cards fell right, right on the Hanging Man. Now the High Priestess is the Virgo Piscean Axis, which I was mentioning before and I do feel that it could be that we've got one, two, three, four, we've got two couples here. For many of you this could be two couples, yes, because I said here we've got a few people. Um, I do feel as though there's been sacrifice. The King of Swords is someone who is quite cold and aloof and not open to emotion. We're very different energies to what, um, very different energies to what the Queen of Pentacles is and what the Queen of Cups is. Why do I feel as though, because we've got the Hierophant here and we've got the Queen of Cups, this could be, um, I feel as though the Queen of Cups is in the picture as well if if this is not the queen of pentacles in another um in another light then this would be someone that is obviously in a um marriage in a committed partnership or relationship could be with the king of pentacles because as i said the door has been opened here the two of cups is here right it's been opened before the moving away, leaving a situation and moving into a, uh, someone is moving, trying to control a situation. Let's see what the Queen of Cups, what else there is here. And we've got the Three of Wands. and We've got the Two of Wands and Three of Wands. Now the Three of Wands could be someone that's turned their back on a situation, yes. Maybe this Queen of Cups has turned her back on a situation. I don't know why, I feel as though the King of Pentacles has turned his back. King of Pentacles is more than likely your energy, I feel. This could be a father already. Now, the Queen of Cups could be. It's a water sign. doesn't matter which water sign. As I said, we've got Pisces and Scorpio. Could even be a Cancer. Um, nevertheless, the Queen of Cups, you know, obviously, you are water. You would show up as the King of Cups. I feel as though the Queen of Cups would be the other partner of yours, but you're showing up here. This is what my guides are telling me. You are showing up as someone very, very stable. Why do I say that? We've got both these characters here together, but because I feel that there is a commitment here and because there is a controlling situation. Here we've got the King of Swords, which could be someone that, as I said, wasn't open to uh, being on the same page. This could be, again, your energy, dear Cancer. This is you looking at the facts, doing the math. You've been sacrificing a lot, but not feeling, not feeling comfort, the comfort at home. Now, I see the King of Swords as Aquarius, but Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. And Uranus is in the sign of Taurus. And as, as I said, radical changes. We've got also the 17, which is the star here. I know this may be a little bit confusing, but 
that's the story that I see. So this could be someone has turned their back on a situation. We have progression, two of wands and three of wands. But the three of wands could also be someone that is patient, someone that is waiting, or someone that is ready to take a journey, ready to cross the water, ready. Usually this is the card of waiting. Maybe waiting for the enlightenment, waiting for those ships to be seen before a move can be made for expansion. We do have the three here. And you know, two of wands, three of wands could also be um, strong creativity, having created something where work is concerned. You know, the Queen of Cups could be someone that's just very intuitive, very, very artistic, very creative as well. If this is work and there is a hierarchy here where, you know, the Hierophant can be a commitment. This could be a success where, where career is concerned. If we see at it in a, see it in a different way. Again, controlling can speak of Capricorn, seventh house. Everything that's been going on in Capricorn is here. I want to take a card on that. And we've got the devil. There we go, Capricorn. Just as I was saying it, this could be fear. This could be sexual attraction. This could be addictions, restrictions. This could be... Um, a lot of work, going up, climbing the ladder, heading for those Ten of Cups through hard work, through support of others. Okay. The devil, again, very dark energy. Capricorn will stabilize something, but it asks for a lot of work. Just let's take this brunette female. Who is this brunette female? And we've got the Knight of Wands. So Knight of Wands speaks again of Sagittarius. She could be someone who is foreign or someone who travels for work. Knight of Wands could also be the player. doesn't matter that it's a knight. Um, the uh, energies are the same. Knight of Wands is someone who is driven by their passion. They're very creative. So let's take one card on this gossip. And we've got the three of swords. There we go. Three-way situation. Heartbreak because of news, difficult news. The acknowledgement of a third person. This could even be um, health issues. Remember what I said before? Let's take that king of pentacles again. And we've got the judgment, which is, again, a second chance. This is Scorpio. Rebirth. That's why I say, dear Scorpio, that it... Uh, what am I saying, dear Cancer, that you may have been fighting change. You're being given a second chance. This is resurrection and Scorpio here. And this is also help, help from your spirit guides and angels. This is Archangel Michael. This is being given a second chance in a situation, in happiness, in life, in uh, a commitment here we've got the soulmate card remember I'm going to take one more card on this two of cups I just want a little bit more clarity on that ten of cups there you go there's the happiness and we've got 12 cups here which is the hanging man again there's been a lot of sacrifice for this for this relationship here and this Queen of Pentacles is someone that is very, very patient. We know that Earth signs are very patient. So, as I said, your partner would more than likely be someone who is very grounded. And again, there's a lot of water. So, for many of you, this could be the same person. Let's take a couple of Sabilas. Let's take the outcome, shall we? We've got Imenel which is the Ace of Wands, and this is a spiritual bond, and it's sitting right on the Hierophant. I did say that there is a strong spiritual connection. Let's take another card. This is a commitment, a proposal. Vecchia Signora, a choice. She's a, the Two of Swords here. This could also be a visitor, or this could be an elderly that is advising you. Okay. This could also be a situation that you've been waiting on. It's matured and ready. And here we've got the Alegria. 
merriment and happiness. This is the six, uh, sorry, the nine of wands, which speaks of you're practically at the end. Okay, there is merriment and happiness celebration. What I'd like to look at now is I want to see what's uh, this devil and the control card on top of next to the eight of cups. We've got the ace of pentacles, which is stanza. This is intimacy, news coming through, things that have been hidden. That's why we've got the page of swords here. And be careful. This could also be, yes, sexual intimacy, but it can also speak of, obviously, the Ace of Pentacles could be a new beginning, a new stable beginning, a new sexual connection, interaction, getting um, intimate. Here we've got Donna de Servizio, which is the Three of Pentacles. This is a helping hand. This is usually my Virgo card in the Sibylas. This is help, nevertheless. And there's news coming through. The Two of Pentacles, again, a choice. News coming through. Here we've got someone moving into um, something to do with a controlling situation, a uh, stable situation, a uh, situation that calls for hard work and courage. And it's a situation which speaks of growth. So if these are legal documents and a divorce, then this is all about mature, maturing okay, through these lessons here. Let me take one more. And we've got the Belvedere, which is the three of hearts, three of cups, being on the lookout, waiting for someone or something to come in. So this is a very, very strong attraction that whoever this eight of cups is up here, and I feel that it's mainly your energy, could be the other way around, okay, you are waiting. You've put in, for some of you, you've already put in the hard work. Now you're waiting on the results. Let's take a couple of Sabilas here. And then I'm going to take a couple of cards on the handwritten cards. Let's look at the now with the Death card and the Four of Pentacles. We have Artista, Seven of Cups, which is Piscean. But this is a discovery that's been made. This could even be a legal uh, representative. It does remind me of the Aquarian ingenious mind and discovery that's been made. Here we've got deliriousness. So whatever has been figured out or worked out or known is bringing um, deliriousness here. Okay. And again, this is the Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles in the tarot is Virgo. And we've got the card of Speranza, the Eight of Cups, which speaks of hope. Sometimes it can be the card of fear, but whatever discovery has been made, even though it's been really tough, it is going to bring, there is hope that it's going to transform a situation that's been left behind. You've got the Eight of Cups twice. Okay, so let's take the handwritten cards and round this uh, reading up, dear Cancer. Well, let's look at the uh, King of Pentacles, which is on the general energy. How the King of Pentacles can speak of stability, um, financial success. If you've been at a point of hardship with the Five of Pentacles here and the Four of Pentacles here, the King of Pentacles is someone who's very abundant. Let's look at what he's got to say. Now, these messages will not resonate for all of you. I need time, time to process, to think. Please be patient with me. And we've got the Seven of Pentacles. So he's looking at his investments, what he needs to do. He needs time. Let's look at the Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles. And we have, you are very attractive. I don't know if I can keep my hands off you and this is the ace of wands so there is a strong attraction not only an emotional attraction but also a physical could this queen um, of pentacles also hold fire in their chart so any fire sagittarius aries or leo let's take a card now on this queen of cups who is all the way down here 
Queen of Cups. And we have, I couldn't stay with you because I felt as though I was suffocating. I want to be free. And this is the Eight of Swords, which is a card of fear. And so is the devil here. So, yeah, we've also got the King of Swords here, which could, for some of you, this could be an ex-partner, an ex-partner of one of these queens. Now, depending on your own personal situation, it could also be someone who wasn't happy at home, as I said, could be your energy again, dear Cancer. Let's take this King of Swords. A King of Swords could even be a, a legal representative. This could even be a solicitor. Let's take a card or a doctor. We have forever yours, Ten of Cups. Forever yours, Ten of Cups, which is also here, Ten of Cups. So, dear Cancer, we'll leave it at that. You know what your story is. You know if this resonated for you. If this did not, please watch your moon and your rising sign. I do see relocation here. That someone is connected very strongly. Someone wants to have fun. There was innocence at some point, but here we've got intelligence, maybe even sneakiness. There is some sort of change. Someone is going for their wish fulfillment, okay? And there is a commitment here. As you can see, we've got the Emmanuel card and the Hierophant. So I will leave you again at that. Thank you so much, dear Cancer. Wishing you all the best. Thank you. See you soon.